Tisiphon. From the planting, pitching, and processing of tea to transportation and sale, how is the world distributed in such a complex chain of trade? Why are you researching all this? Ah, see, now you're asking the right questions. I am a Tisiphon, a researcher from the Academia of Ahumana and I'm currently studying the unique extra system of the tea trade in Chinubel. I have to say, the reasoning behind the tea farmers' tea houses, the communications office, and other organization distribution of work is quite ingenious. Well, yeah. To produce crops of the same quality and to so at scale, it's necessary to study the proper division of labor. Uh, you want to learn how to grow tea too? The important thing isn't the tea itself, but the organizational, organization, organizational, wait, do you say that right? An organizational model capable of mass producing high quality cash crops sustainably over long periods. Alright, seems that you have your work cut out for you. I shall take my leave then. Ah. It seems someone wanted to speak to me just now. It was scared off by what I was muttering about. Any organizational organiz <laughs> any or organizational questions that scary? Hmm. Uh, organizational organizational, yeah. While the mill lifts stand guard, evil shall not prevail. Yeah. Definitely is right. Hey, uh, Zhuangzhu? Building more watchovers does more than eliminate security blind spots. It also improves the efficiency of coastal defenses. Uh, watchtowers? Coastal defenses? You interested in military engineering too? Um, I can see the righteous part in your eyes. Perhaps you'll join our foreign aid unit or become a reliable ally of ours one day. Maybe he doesn't know who I am. In that case, allow me to give you a brief explanation. In short, we have a long coastline, coastline with complex terrain around Yellow Wharf, and there are many blind spots all across it. If more simple and low cost what, what low cost watchovers watchtowers can build. Okay, if more simple and low cost. Why can, I, why can I not speak today? If more simple and low cost watchtowers can be built, we will be we will be able to control the border efficiently. Forget bandits, even a ferocious hawk wouldn't be able to get through them. Of course, this assumes that we can figure out duty schedule at first out. If we perfect perfect a sound tube transmission system while building the watchtowers and coastal defenses we will be able to coordinate better. At that point, our first line of defense will be considerably resilient, and it can act as a severe deterrent to even the most formidable foes. What are you hoping to achieve? We are exploring the idea of cooperative engagement ability, separating units that receive intelligence from the units that launch the attack, which will give us an advantage. Station of ballista and blast launching mechanisms can be placed behind a ridge out of the enemy's, the enemy's side. While attacking, some units won't aim at our targets directly, instead observing from a forward position and constantly reporting on target positions, firing based on information received. As long as they keep correcting the trajectory, their projectiles will hit the target eventually. This way, we can use distance as our defense, especially when our numbers are very limited. This would be extremely effective against enemies whose attacks require direct line of sight, such as Bruin mechanisms. If our technology keeps advancing, we might be able to design mechanisms that can automatically correct the trajectory of arrows and shells to some extent. Add-on observers will provide direction data and our efficiency will increase a hundred, even a thousand times. At that point, no number of ruin mechanisms will make any difference. I see you are... Uh, I see you are... 
Yeah, see, you're doing a good job. So we're going to break out. Not at all. It is our duty to prepare for rainy days and take precautions. We enjoy a good relationship with Fontaine, and we do not expect our relationship relations to turn sour in between centuries. But the road recording to historical data, our primary enemy has never been foreign nations, nations, but something even more powerful from within. Our predecessors succeeded in stopping the huge threat from centuries ago, but no one can be certain that we will not face even greater foes one day. It would be too late to start preparing when danger is already at the door. That is why we must build our different defenses. That is why we must build our defenses based on the worst case scenario and the most mighty enemy possible. I'm not finished with you. <clears throat> you can do it. I won't keep you any longer. I thank you for your support. It is our want. It is our wants to seek. Uh, I think there's a typo there. Uh, it is our want to seek improvement while maintaining sta stability. Stability, yeah. <sighs> Already there's a chest. And there's a waypoint. Um, you guys are looking for something? I am the one they call Red Slapis. Have you heard about him? Or about me, rather? No. That's good. One man's stone is another man's gem. Okay. Well, see the waypoint, but first I am going to look elsewhere. Genu Adepti. So they are coming from all this way over here. I'll take that lift later. First, Sai. Sai Jinswen. These fools just won't do what they're told. I'll need some more obedient dogs. Um, darts? Hmm? I don't think we know each other, friend. Leave. Okay, so apparently you don't want to talk with me. Fine. Suit yourself. Found you. Oh, there's a spin crystal here. Pick up that. 25. All right. Welcome to. Welcome to. How should I pronounce this? Welcome to. Has her post. Welcome to Has her post. This is where the communications office conducts its business as at Dillon Wharf. What can I do for you? What do you guys do here? The registration of people and goods, entering and exiting, the inspection and, if needed, the quarantine of the above, applications for delivery within Lewis borders, and a dark good storage. Those are our four main tasks. Usually, outlanders who wish to do business in Liwe and who arrive at Leland Wharf will come here to register their personal information. Our staff will then inspect and disinfect their goods. If you wish to transport goods to other locations from the Leeway's borders, this is where you register. We will also evaluate the total quantity of goods and distances to destinations, and the manifest will be sent to transport units or our partners at a secure transport agency after which said secondary departments will do the actual transportation. If you have not yet planned a final delivery destination, 
You can also register here to have them sorted, or stored rather, temporarily in one of our warehouses. Of course, all this assumes you already have a formal business permit. If you need one, we can also serve as a proxy to help you apply for it. Of course, that would be a bit less efficient than doing it in only way harder. Alright. Um, the communications office? If you want to better understand our duties, it might be best to consult the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I am just a lowly staff member after all. To, be, to the best of my knowledge though, our office is mainly responsible for transportation and leeway. We are also involved where appropriate, with related construction and road management, which is why we have a rather large number of staff. Good road networks, bridges, waterways and docks are critical to transporting goods to various locations in leeway after all. Regardless of whether you are interested in traveling with a caravan or have some talent architecture, you're welcome to consider becoming an employee. And like me, enjoy a nice, stable, peaceful life of an employee here in the office. It's not bad. Of course, the office also conducts monthly performance evaluations to discourage negligence. So if you want to keep working here, You'll have to constantly improve yourself. Alright. I don't have any questions for you at the moment. Well, you might become a world weight walking merchant for all we know. You'll have things to ask of us then, I expect. Okay, uh, bye Fonju. Leashing. Consider choosing another transportation plan. Adjustments can still be made to the new delivery plan's transfer point. Oh, forgive me. Can I help you? Uh, why? What are you muttering to yourself about? It's complicated. I'll try to give you a summary. I work for the communications office, and my job is to evaluate and optimize transfer plans for designated routes. Or routes, rather. Even if the communications office is well staffed, covering all the transportation work throughout Leeway is quite impossible. Which is why we outsource some work to the local secure transport agencies. But given how their equipment varies, controlling the transportation times with any precision is a nightmare. This in turn poses a considerable challenge to our planning cap capabilities. A situation like this will be difficult to turn around in the short term. After all, standardizing their equipment requires a huge investment. Local secure transport agencies are usually unable to afford such large sums. They still have to live and eat, right? So it's up to us to, to it's up to us to aka the solution out somehow. Alright. Um transportation proposal? Take this for example. Agency A must transport goods from Lumidus Harbor to Liwe Harbor. All right. During this process, they transport the goods to the docks between Sharon Village and Chinsa Village. All right. They can choose to transport the goods and carts to the opposite shore and continue on land. Now, you may have realized they're continuing south along the waterway before getting on the land at uh, Wanshu Inn is the superior option. But things aren't that simple. The ship traveling down the waterway may not belong to Agency A. It may belong to the Communications Office, Agency B, or Independent Ship Owner C. In moments like these, Specialized personnel are required to coordinate the transfers between different individuals and or organizations. That is the transportation plan I mentioned. Sounds like a lot of trouble. Oh, it can't be helped. Getting various groups to cooperate has always been complicated. What I mentioned earlier was just the basics. Accounting for the type and time sensitivity of each shipment makes this a uh, dizzying task and then some. 
Let's say the grain output in Xinyuville isn't looking good and a large import is required. This would occupy a large part of the transportation capacity available from Liwei's heartlands to Xinyuville. But the main export commodity here is tea leaves, and sway characteristics, uh, packing methods, and storage conditions greatly differ from grains. Fortunately, my seniors have resolved that issue a long while back. If I had to optimize the transportation of grains and tea leaves, my hair would turn completely white within the week. Wow. Okay. Um, uh, well, uh, good luck and uh, farewell. So thanks for the words of encouragement, so I'll have to give it more thought. Yeah, y you do you. Is that? Wait. Oh, so that's the second Jade Mouth. Oh, I see. Alright. Let's uh, have a look. Well, and here we are, Elon Wharf. Search for the Fontanian technician. Let's get that teleport waypoint while we're at it. Uh, Yon Yudri, guard for hire in the city. Hey, Yudri. I wish there were fewer steps. I really want to get them to our customers quickly. Steps? The elevation differences in Yon Wharf are too great, and the water powered lift is only used to transport large items. It doesn't run off either. Sometimes we just have to take the stairs when we get a job that needs delivering quickly. The paths between the upper and lower wharf are designed to be long and winding. Stops them from being steep, but that's extra work for us. I've heard that the communications office is planning on building several small lifts. That will improve the situation, no doubt about it. Yeah, but I'm not finished with you. Stop. Are <laughs> uh, delivery timetables too tight? But we don't really have a say in this. And neither do our customers. Accidents on the job are very common. And we are often delayed by all kinds of things. Sometimes we are several days late. And if we were delivering precious ingredients, it'd be spoiled by then. We don't like to see it happen either, so we can only deliver as quickly as possible. But can you pin the blame on our fellow guards? No, you can't. Some jobs require traveling very long distances, across places that may not be safe. That's a tough job, a tough job. You've got this though. Right, I'll just suck it up, I can take a few more jobs. Yeah, definitely. Though I don't understand it in the least, I still think it's amazing. Just watching her stand there singing, or sing while walking around, or sing while sitting, and then sing while she lifts her hand and slowly lets it fall, all the while ceaselessly singing. Wow. I really don't know just what kind of magical powers the old lady has. Babbling, chanting, singing, and reciting. Reciting and crying? I haven't got a clue what she's saying, but it's amazing. Little Mao, can you understand? <laughs> That's just how opera singing is. And weren't there fight scenes later? There was that old dude who could do 88 flips and tricks. Riveting stuff. Yeah, it's great. It's just a shame that I don't understand a thing. A whole bunch of people fighting and jumping all over the place. All super flashy and such. One on one. Several all fighting each other, five or six taking turns, it's just almost addictive. Hello, we're looking for a technician from Fontaine. Chief Lua and Grand Palu said, uh, what name did they give us again? Haute Montagne. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> Ot 
haute montagne haute montagne haute montagne yeah i guess with the, the inflations and in the, <laughs> the syllables i guess that made sense <laughs> yeah sounds like grandpa who sent you all right just call me haute montagne i'm a researcher from the fontaine research institute nice um <laughs> I am um, I am uh, the young master of the Fian Drama Guild. All right, all right. That's quite enough acting. Are you all right, Lemol? Yes, I'm. I'm all right. I'm all right. <clears throat> yep. Uh, young master is. Uh, wait, that's not right. He's a uh, Lemol, and uh, Paimon is Paimon. Anyway, it was uh, Grand Palu who sent us looking for you. Mr. Lemol, Miss Paimon, hello. I'm Little Mal, a friend of mountains. Yes, and that's what my name means in English. Yeah. Haute Montagne can be a bit hard to pronounce. Oh, don't trust, trust me, I can't do it. So I asked Little Mal to just call me that. Really? Quite an interesting pair. How did you two meet? It was quite fortuitous. Last year, I went to the mountains in the south for a spell and got lost in the fog. A huge beast the size of a Cal Etienne Louis was glaring at me, and I thought I was done for, but just then, the little kid suddenly shouted at me. I followed the sound through the mist and got out, and was saved. Otherwise, I would have been eaten, just like that, and my family in Fontaine wouldn't have been able to claim compensation on my account. <laughs> I know more about what goes on in the mountains than the grown-ups. Is that so? You're amazing, little now. Uh, Haute Montagne, it seems that Grandpa Lou and uh, Chief Lou are looking for you. Alright, got it. Uh, I'll be there in a jiffy. <sighs> All the shows here are just too good. I ended up watching several, one right after the other. And now my legs have fallen asleep. I just don't understand a word. What sorts of stories are they telling? <clears throat> it's about how they back when... Uh, it's about how, way back when, a huge chop and a monster from the mountains fought. A uh, you kill me, I kill you story. In the end, everyone dies. Uh, that's a pretty concise summary. But don't talk about killing and dying so much, little Mel. If you think about that kind of stuff too often, you might become the villain when you grow up. Since those in Shaun Village are waiting for them on me, it's time to go. See you all later. Let's let's go watch the shows here again when you're about to head back to Fontaine. By the way, the marks on uh, Little Mao here uh, are quite reminiscing. I mean, reminiscent of the uh, uh, solitary swanee. To me, at least. I don't know if there's any correlation. Okay, now that we've solved the puzzle, we can get back to business, little Mal. How about you? Uh, what are you two going to do? Huh? Uh, to be honest, we're not quite sure how to explain it. The water and soil in Shinin Vale I tried a out of whack, and we need to cure them for everything in Shinya Vale to get better. I get it. Is Paimon is trying to say that we need to restore nature? Hey, that's right! You're really amazing, little Mao. Get it right away! Restoring nature, you say? Did someone talk to you about that? That's right! A friend who's always taking care of me told me. She wants to restore nature to restore nature too. If we restore nature Everything will get better, so I want to help too. She also told me about you too. Fujin? Fujin? Oh! So you've seen her too? Huh? You mean my friend? Of course! Silly Miss Paimon, how could we be friends if I've never seen her? Fair point. That makes things easier. Actually, we want to... 
Paimon remembers we need to find the jade treasures in the water and then do some rain jade, right? Uh, but even though we've come upstream, we still haven't found any clues. Ah, I know. Come with me. I'll show you where to look. What? Is it really that easy? Until now, your, your friend wants to restore nature, right? Yeah, she's told me a lot. Such as stories from before Chow and Village became Chow and Village, and the tea trees became to be, and more. She said that things would get worse and worse in Chinyu Valley if the natural order isn't restored. Well, it's like we're on the same, same page then. Little Mao, you just said you knew where we could find leads, right? Yeah, I don't know if it will help, but when you mentioned jade treasures and ray jade and stuff, I just thought of it. Come with me. Yep, let's go! What did he thought of? Showing of the Sacred Mountain. Floating Jade Treasure of Chinyu. Yeah, but before I do any of this, and I have to go down, it seems, uh, I'll uh, look in the Yellong Wharf. Which is what, that's what exploration is. And you're a storyteller, Jiwu. I, knew, I know that you have uh, an audience, but uh, I want to talk with you. They say that the carp in Xinyu Vale are intelligent, and the stories about them are quite fascinating. Listen in. Just as the raging waves were about to swallow Xinyu Vale, the Melliff sergeant in command ordered the weapons, armor, and shields to be put together to form numerous ladders. The Millif held the ladders together with their arms, single-minded in their determination to help the people climb up and away, completely disregarding their own safety. Just then, a melodic splash of water resounded through the mountains. A piece of jade emerged from the clouds, surged forward through the waves, and overtook them. Keep listening. In just an instant, the exquisite jade grew in opposition to the waves, and just a moment later, it was the size of a mountain, crashing into the valley. They say a series of clinks, light shaped pieces, striking against each other, echoed from shore to shore. Clink, the waves subsided, clink, the water stabilized, and clunk, the waters fled back through the mountains, the light tea being seeped away. Uh, alright. Stop listening, as they say. Alright. Hey. So. But you were there! <laughs> you, you were there! <laughs> I guess it's night time. I will indulge you. Adjustment to still be made to the new delivery plan's transfer point. Oh, forgive me, can I help you? Uh, no, 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 I guess I am alright. Good luck and farewell. As uh, I said earlier. Shit. Uh, let's talk to this guy. Where do you. Are you coming from Fontaine? Lee Wait Hermanson? That's, that's his name, right? Uh, Lee Wait is great, but it's hard to brew. And that's a headache for those who just want to create Drake. Uh, have any suggestions? Ha! Huh, I have an idea. We'll break the leaves and up into smaller pieces and just and put them in a cloth or paper bag. And when you want tea, you can just put the bag in a cup and add water. You can even separate the tea leaves and the tea immediately after making it. Not bad, right? Once I return to Fontaine, so yeah, I was right. Once I return to Fontaine after the steel, I'm going to put my invention to production right away. People in my line of work always have a lot of ideas, but I can't let them have this one. Does this count as drinking tea? Frankly speaking, this may not be the best way for those who are serious about tea. 
After all, the cloth and the paper bags will carry flavor all their own, which might affect the flavor of the tea in turn. Dried it, grinded the tea leaves to finally might also have an impact on the flavor. We'll just have to keep trying to improve the paper or the cloth bags to minimize the aforementioned influence they might have. Okay. Um, uh, speed really isn't the rule when drinking, drinking tea, is it? I've been doing business in Yellow War for a decade and I realized something. Not everyone knows how to appreciate tea. Some aren't particular about the flavor. It's unrealistic to ask them to spend a ton of time studying how to properly make the stuff. It's why I understand you need to watch the rest of your troublesome alone, to say nothing of the whole process. My tea bags are only for those who are looking for a quick cup. The traditionalists can still make the tea the old fashioned way. No one will be hurt. Okay. Um. Bye and good luck. Farewell, you two. It's fine. Uh, brand image consultant. Are you from um, from Where that clothing sh store that uh, is in Fontaine, possibly? No. Do you know someone named uh, Sherry from Sherry Boutique? By any chance, Virginia? I mean, there, Virginia? Hmm. <laughs> so many businesses. So much potential. All the latches are died to help build up that brand image. Um, and uh, you are? Hello there, my friendly and passionate friend. I'm Virginia, and I hail from Cartier Lyonnais in the court of Fontaine, where I'm really known as Petit Air. After arriving in Lyon Ward, my friends in Lyon nicknamed me Virginia based on my name's meaning. There, or green, is the color of tea leaves. So far, it's made the locals more affable toward me and helped build my personal brand. And in the long term, I'll be having a standard stay in the long war to carefully study and promote the local cuisine. Um, why don't I call my first travel guide Veres Vouchsafes? A tourism guidebook? <laughs> My sister Rouge and I have dedicated ourselves to the discovery of sites worth visiting and cuisine worth tasting. Gorgeous views and delicious food are treasures that belong to everyone, and to that, every tourist should seize the opportunity to enjoy them. But non frequent visitors must inquire about the same spots and cuisine from scratch. What a bother! It would probably take 10 years just like it's taken me. Just think, how convenient would things be if you had one, or even several detailed comprehensive guides to refer to? That's exactly why my sister and I have decided to explore every settlement in the vat, or create that very series of travel guides for the sake of uh, all tourists. Um, okay, so you're doing that, but uh, I'm sorry to say that there's already someone who has done this a similar thing. Her name is Alice. You know, the Tavat the Vat travel guide? Maybe you don't know about that. Things have been going very smoothly, and we only encountered a small hiccup along the way. Problem being that my sister found herself unused to the food out of the fountain, so we had to switch jobs. Now her rouge's registry will be a record of suit attractions, while my bear vouchsafes will be about cuisine. Right, right. Uh, brand image? What do you think? It's your first time hearing this term, I bet. I'll bet. My elder sister Rouge and I are both representatives of this profession. We still haven't made a name for ourselves in the Court of Fontaine, sure. But many stores have sought out for uh, help. We offer comprehensive assistance to stores to improve their public brand, including but not limited to advertisements, 
news channels, short videos, large tales, events, etc. For many stores, their excellent service not flattening their reputation. However, through the publicity we offer, we'll bring their repute up to par with their ability. According to information we've collected, some restaurants in Liwei are suffering from this issue. Not one main restaurant, I'm afraid. I'm afraid John Lane is. and uh, Chef Mao are. are greatly impressive th with their work, and they're, they, may, they may quite an enthusiast out of every people in Liwei. Most restaurants here offer delicious cuisine at reasonable, reasonable prices, so they rarely have any competitors in the same price range. Price range. Residents only need to spend a small amount of Mora to enjoy a sumptuous feast. However, more high-end food and beverage brands are needed. After all, even chefs require the support of a brand image. If all restaurants operated on a small scale, the culinary profession would be seen as tons of work for little money. Few would be willing to take out the culinary arts. If this, if this profession is to have a future, we'll also need outfits that target the wealthy, earn big, and pay chefs handsomely. This high-low combination will allow the general public to enjoy delicious food without worry. It would also be respectable to be a chef, and you'd be paid proportionately to your skill. Maybe I can help impro improve this situation. I need to get a better understanding of Liwei's food industry first, though. Best to start our research from Yellow Wharf before gradually expanding outward. Okay. Uh, sorry to bother you in, in any way. Oh my, how polite of you. Feel free to come chat with me anytime. Uh, I'll see. Uh, unless I want to see this uh, good doggy here. Good doggy. No, that doesn't have a name. Music. You never knew how awesome it is in Huh? That's so fascinating. Shinya Vale is so unlike Liwei Harbor. Uh, run into anything fun? In a lot of ways. For example, there are absolutely huge boats in the village to the south. Ten times larger than the boats in any boat. Or the boats in any boat. <laughs> While floating over on a bamboo raft, I saw a jade ornament the size of a mountain. A jade ring. A jade pendant? What was it again? You mean a uh, jade mal? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Whatever. Forget it. I'll figure it out one day. A girl fishing by the waterfall said there's a type of crop in Shinyu Vale that bestows good luck upon those who see it. I wanna find one. The most interesting is, is the... <clears throat> the most interesting is the washu dance. That Deep Huge and his friends are doing. They're like big cats with painted faces nimbly jumping up and down. Ah, oh boy, Gammy. Anyway, everything here is so novel. So many things here I've never seen or heard of before. Well, I'm glad you're having fun. I play safe, you hear? It's fine. Shinyu Vale is huge, there are, so there are many places where I can play. My parents wouldn't let me leave the city when we lived in Liwei Harbor, so I was limited to playing by the entrance to other darts. But there were too many people in both those places. I kept running into people all the time. Sometimes there would be groups of people moving things at the darts, and that put me at risk of being struck by something. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yellow, yellow barf. <laughs> yellow barf is much better. It may be small, but it just has the right amount of people 
searching play to my heart's content. Bye, I'm going to have some fun. <laughs> I'm going to meet Deep Hewitt later, so you can tell me his amazing stories about jamming. And then Pussy Tilly not spelled jamming. Oh my god. A chest. Yes. One man's stone is another man's gem. To this. We did this. What was it? A valley stone lamp. Have a bright light. Honshion. God for hire. Ha! Training is the only way to pack more power behind that punch. Gotta keep going. Uh, who are you? I am one of the leaders of the Sword and Stormbrand Secure Transport Agency. As it stands now, as it stands now, you can figure me as half an owner. Let me tell you, you used to be free of, of us leaders, and we were all very good. At our peach, we were in charge of almost half of the orders here in Yellow Wharf. After we stopped working with the communications office, the best leader among the three of us lost his drive and just hung around all day. He used to be the kind of guy who trained out and do a waterfall to discipline himself. I can't for the life of me figure out what happened. Another was ambushed by bandits and took almost a full year to recover. He's no longer as good as he was, so I'm the only one left. <clears throat> the owner saw, me what saw what happened and decided to just go hands off on us. We'll just have to wait until the newly recruited guards of hire are ready and see if things improve. Speaking of which, Deep Yurch isn't slacking off, is he? And I wonder how Juan the Third is doing. Yeah, Juan the Third. Aye, aye, aye. Definitely know about him. I've seen him. I do spend my days just worrying, worrying about things, don't I? What are the recruiting, re recruiting standards for gods? Good question. You must be agile, patient, good with directions, observant, and have a quick mind. These are all necessary qualities. You need them to defeat bandits and monsters while on the job so you can escort whatever you're delivering to the destination safely. Most importantly, and many ignore this, you need to have chivalry. You must not be tempted by money. There was once a real scumbag who colluded with the bandits during a job and seized the goods. Many guards went after him as a result, handing him in sorry arse before handing him over to the middle left. <clears throat> The stuff he stole returned, and he was forced to pay all he had as compensation, on top of spending the rest of his life in prison. Anyway, I digress. You must be chivalrous and righteous. Chivalrous and righteous. Just like uh, Zin Show is, right? About training methodologies. So, Han Hanshan? Hanshan is a disciple of the Drohua clan? The Drohua disciple? I don't know. You don't look like some middle left elite. An adventure then. If you ask me, we, the middle left troops. Oh, okay. I don't, never mind. Uh, adventurers face different challenges. So our training programs are for, upside different things. For God, everything is about stamina. Endurance and weight training are extremely important. You can ask Garmin about it if you'd like. He's not the most muscular one, but his stamina, strength, and explosive power is second to, uh, second to none. Yeah, I know. Maybe it's because he often practices wushu dance, which requires precise movements and core cool strength to get through any given show. But I can't train like him. So I improve my stamina in the most basic way possible. So we're getting more lore about jamming. Bye, I'm off to train too. Ah, bye, I'm off to train too. You look pretty motivated. Let's take it to the next level.
Alright. Just for getting onto this thing? What if... Wait. Ah. So you have to stay in the pillars. I see. Wait, wait, wait. I, I think I know what to do. Gather. I did not do it right. <laughs> almost. Almost. Um. Right. I have to wait a bit. Got it. Okay, okay. One more. Ah, crap. Wait. There we go. Done so. <laughs> that was, uh, that was interesting. So, did you got for hire? Uh, horse dances, pure paint to maintain. Horse dances, pure paint to maintain. Come on, legs. Head in there. Three more hours. Are you alright? How oh, exhausting. Learn to treat my teeth and cheap training. It's like Jamin says. One second on stage is the result of ten years of off stage training. Wow. Um, if I don't train hard, my punches will hit like wet noodles and my might trip all over my own spear, stab myself my sword in battle. It will be too late for regrets then. Are you one of the gods for hire here? Ah, right. But I'll be honest with you, I'm still new here at the Secure Transport Agency, and my current food still isn't up to snuff. I gotta practice, slowly improve myself. Oh, other than guarding transports, I'm also the drummer of the mighty mythical beasts. No worries though, Jamin's walked me through it, and I've been practicing the basics every day. If you've got some time to spar, or to spare, you gotta come see it. Got nothing but five star reviews from everyone in town. Okay, so five star reviews. Uh, so tiring. How the heck did you manage to keep going? That's Gavin for you. Perseverance. It's his forte. And, uh, he's also quite motivated, that lad. Oh, we'll look at the time. Dear me. We should be sipping tea and having dim sum right now. You are? Me? I'm just an ordinary guard for hire. If you're here for business, you can go talk to Han at the Sword of the Strongbot Secure Transport Agency. It's almost time for tea. What should I eat? What do you think? Wait, you don't seem to be from around here. Never mind. Alright. How can you be so relaxed? I just finished. I just finished a job that took half of a year, so I'm taking it easy right now. 
It's different these days. The communications office doesn't want to see a monopoly and a monopoly, and they want all the secure transport agencies to have jobs. I used to get 10 or so big jobs in 6 months, but nowadays I only get about 2. The other 8, the other eight have gone to other agencies. But that's fine with me. I still enjoy life without those 8 jobs, but some might talk if they don't get their share. When I was still rude to you, no one looked after me. I'll just think of this as a favor for the communications office and for the young ones. If I keep taking their jobs, I might feel bad when I get old, you know? And, uh, I'll do Yum. And I'll do Yum Cha, too. That sounds about right. Now get going. One who. There are lots of goods today too. I'll have to make five trips. <sighs> My waist is hurting more than ever. More work to be done means more and more to be made. You're right. Staying positive is a good thing. Sometimes, however, no amount of joy from money made can master yet bodily pain and fatigue. That's true. I hope everyone can strike a balance between making money, making money, and taking care of their health, especially those of my age. If you let the vigor of youth blind you to the needs for self-care and behave recklessly as a result, you pay the price once you're middle age. I was stubborn in my youth. Not only did I neglect my posture while working, I drank and stayed up late at all the time. Now it's too late for regret. Let me rest against the box as possible while longer. If any large help will alleviate the pain. I also can use some kind of device for assistance? Actually, it's already in use. See that huge lithium mechanism over there? I heard the skilled artisans of Liwe have analyzed the characteristics of Fontaine's clockwork mecha and are working on designing a smaller version that's suitable for use in Liwe. Once the power source issue is resolved, and start rolling out the manufacturing line to help us with physical labor very soon. According to what I heard during some drinking sessions. How do I put it? Technology iterates rapidly. Yes, that's it. Nope, but I want to talk to you, so I'm sorry, but you're not going anywhere. Thanks very much. Wonders of the world, though. What about sliced meat now? Find the habitat of the venerable jade stone turtle. What about sliced meat now? Find the habitat of the venerable jade stone turtle. Okay, but I need to change the clutch. Put it during the day. Even though. I'm sure there might be some interesting things at night, so I want to discuss with the one. It's a bad, it's a bad thing that we can't see Garmin during the day, but hey. Uh. Do you want to see a doctor? True. That reminds me. I got a prescription from Dr. Yixing in Shaolin Village once, yeah, we've, we've seen him. And it alleviated the pain tremendously. The coordinator of the guys in the secure transport agencies, I should seek help from Dr. Bai at Boo Boo Pharmacy if I want to be fully cured. Dr. Baizu? Baizu? A guard once found himself with a bone deep injury after losing some monsters in the mountains, but it only took a few months for him to make a full recovery with Dr. Bai's medicine. It was like magic. But it, it, it's an arduous journey from there to here for the Tobias apprentice, Chi Chi. I think I'll just write a letter in advance. Once there are more patients here, she can deliver the medication on one go instead of suffering on my account. Hope your work goes well. See you later. Thanks for your thanks for the encouragement. You're so kind. And you too. How? How? 
Are you standing on that pillar right now, John Lee? I will not try to find out. It's better. It's better not to ask. For that matter. Riceland. Team merchant. No matter how many times I made the journey, it always feels so far to me. In a few years, I fear my body won't be able to endure it. Are oh, you alright? Thank you for your concern, I can still manage for now. I'm merely inventing because of my soul lights. If you think about it, the transportation distance is quite reasonable when purchasing commodities in bulk from Milan Wharf right now. You transport, you transport the goods from Milan Wharf to the dock southeast of Chowan Village. For the waterway to one shoot in before transferring to Leeway Harbor. Transfer to Leeway Harbor, then load the ship bound to for Dolman Port. Direct land of transportation through the Stone Gate is an option too, but it requires hiring too many carts. That's a hassle to manage, so water transportation is more convenient in the end. I heard some amateur merchant from Monster once transported goods by land the whole way through. What a madman, just how long would it have taken him? How many dangerous areas did we have to pass through? Can you introduce yourself real quick? Hmm, your presence, I'm sure of it. You're a big boss here on business, aren't you? Nice to meet you, I'm Freisland, a tea merchant from Monstad, and I specialize in affordable tea leaves. Tea leaves from Yellow Wharf are really popular. Each time I get back to Monster so I live within two months. As such, I'm just through purchasing some high end tea leaves. That way, no customers get to enjoy them slowly, and I get to improve my profit margins. Anyway, I'm a regular here, same seat, same tea. If you're planning to start a business in Monster, you're welcome to work with me. Now, I think the wine is quite prevalent there. <coughs> I won't bother you then. Oh, wait, wait, I didn't, I didn't see what he said. It's alright, you can sit down and have a chat. We can listen to stories and watch plays together too. Yeah, but I, I need to go talk to someone now. You, storyteller. As for what storytellers should, should talk about on and off the stage, well, there are treats to that trade. I'm not planning on doing into more detail. Please, please, why the hurry? Allow me to prepare first. We'll talk seriously tonight. I do have some of the full tales I can tell you now. Though. Such as? For example, a certain mer merchant from Fontaine was invited to tea during his visit to Chowan Village. As soon as the water entered the teapot, he poured it into cups. And without waiting, and gulped it down. Raising its rich aroma. Little did it know that it was merely the water used to rinse the tea set. And the rich aroma I spoke of it was just the remnants of the last pot of tea. So, seeing this, the host not embarrassed, embarrassed the merchant and took a few sips as well. After that, the, hot brewed, the host brewed a pot of fine tea and offered it to the merchant. Is that it? There was also a poet from Monstad who had a drinking contest with a few young men in the village. One young man's home brewed rice wine was sweet and true, smooth. The poet drank several bowls in succession, and he was in such high spirits it seemed to him like he didn't cover the secrets of the world. He elbowed his way through the crowd and began to scribble furiously as a chilling gust went past. The poet was stunned for a moment, only to topple over with a resonant thump. Once he sobered up and took a look at the secrets of the world, he detained the previous night. The first sentence began thus, peel apples before eating them. Okay, nice, nice. Ahem, <clears throat> but I usually, I usually don't tell such stories in places like this. At most, I tell them in small tea houses and avoid crowded restaurants. This way I can tell my stories comfortably, and everyone feels comfortable listening to them. 
Or why some old fool start nagging me and what I would do what would I do then? Ha! <sighs> what am I doing? Making my steals and story dribbles sounds so terrible. I can on I can only make ends meet by resorting to enough dos methods. Why, if I applied myself, I'll be better than anyone. But doing it every day is just, you know, exhausting. Comfort is everything in life. Not planning on going into it more detail? Please, please, wait. Okay, so I've already read this. No need to do that again. I'm still trying to. Uh, have my throat. Alright, um, one's daytime. Big chair now. Uh, Shwizzy, Jilwe Tea House waitress. Please follow me. We have seats over here. Would you like to enjoy some tea while listening to the performance, or would you prefer a work meal? What kinds of tea are there? Our tea house proudly offers both the single origin Yawan tea and Sunglow tea that Shinyville is renowned for. In every available grade, we also have the Tianhan Tianhan Bohia, Yunlai white tea, and Bishui green tea, which are popular in Liwei Harbor, all at, all at its port quality. Okay. Um, work meal? Oh, forgive me, according to Miss. Uh, Ver Virginia's suggestion, a more elegant name for it would be a simple meal. Indeed, it's a simple meal for those coming and going on business. Of course, we serve regular lunch and dinner as well. However, we usually don't serve them in our outdoor dining area. These tables are usually reserved for guests to sip tea while listening to performances and stories. Our tea house is indoor dining indoor dining area, private seats, and private rooms are temporarily under renovation. Please do give us a visit once those renovations are completed. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking around. You, you do you. Look forward to serving you again. It's almost night time. Uh, Jiwa Tea Merchant. Uh, there are many intricacies to drinking tea. Clear your mind, take a sip of tea, and sense the whispers within your drink. That is the attitude all tea lovers should have. How incredibly sophisticated. It's just a habit. Tea tasting habits differ among tea lovers from place to place. Danes prefer simply tea while watching a play or film, or some even add milk and spices. Most of them treat tea as a common beverage. No different from coffee or al alcohol. But in my opinion, tea tasting from the resident for the residents of Shinyu Vale revolves around the concept of peace and exploration. Yes, peacefully exploring the tree's original flavor. Tea tasting seems closer to ritual people practice after a busy day to relieve themselves of the bustle and clear their minds. Is it really that serious? Um, perhaps my words were too formal and caused you confusion. Tasting tea is itself a relaxed experience. No need for baths or changing clothes and burning incense and all that performative putting in its chat. Just sit back and enjoy. I hope that you too will discover in peace while sipping tea. Inner peace. As a chest is right next to me, she need debt tea times five. Certainly worth the extra mile. <clears throat> what what other insights and wisdom can you share? Please enlighten me. We merely met by chance and I had a short conversation, so such politeness isn't necessary. Tea tasting comes later and tea preparation comes first. If we do plan to go into it, then we must discuss tea preparation first, and the specifics of it depend on the type of tea. For example, you lie white tea. It's shaped like a silver needle and should not be brewed with boiling water. The water must be allowed to cool until it's at 70% of its boiling temperature. First, 
want the tea with some hot water and pour an appropriate amount of water into the teapot. Wait patiently for 10 minutes until the tea turns a light amber hue. Only then should you take a sip. The brewing steps are reversible with this shoe green tea. It requires pouring the water first, then the tea leaves. And single original Yohuan, Yohuan tea, one of the teas Chinyaville is famous for, requires brewing at high temperatures. Boiling water must be used after letting it stand for a short moment. Besides that, single origin Yohan tea should be paired with small teapots and teacups, and every pot must not be filled with too much water. I fear that the details cannot be captured with so few words. Fortunately for you, I heeded Mr. Frisland's advice and made the artisans of my tea house Tea House Straw Write a Book on Tea Preparation and Tasting. If you would like to delve deeper into the various teas and their intricacies, you can consider waiting until the book is finished. I am certain a careful read of it will enlighten you. Sure. When drinking I will be back to hear a detailed explanation from you. Well then, until we meet again. Right. Alright. Now. Baishu, boss of Jiwe Tea House. May everyone enjoy good health, booming, booming businesses, rewarding careers, wealth, and success. Truly refined, may well find you too. Thank you. Judging by your appearance, you must be a noble. Maybe one who's achieved extreme wealth a long time ago. If you ever decide to spend in Yulong Wharf, you can count on me to help with anything you may need. Thank you. Uh, I'll do that. You are? I'm Baishu, the owner of Jiulue Tea House. Many of the nearby inns are under my name as well. Rest assured, you can leave your food and accommodation in Yulong Wharf to my staff. Your business is really prospering, it seems. You're too kind. I was merely lucky to ride the wave of industrial upgrading. Once upon a time, I was a very ordinary tea farmer who grew mediocre tea. It's all thanks to the inspiration I received from Master Zhu Guan that my fortunes took a drastic change for the better. When the primary tea making equipment in Xinyuvel was being upgraded, for classic tea cauldrons to machinery, I caught wind and took advantage of that early adoption to accumulate a substantial amount of funds. I started a tea house for those funds and soon expanded to inns and restaurants. After visiting my, visiting my tea house, after visiting my tea houses, restaurants and inns, foreign guests often purchased some tea leaves to try back at home or as a gift. I fail to be an astounded tea farmer, but I fully intend to provide financial support and publicity to my former colleagues. I'm quite satisfied with where my career is gone now, so my next goal is to help more business people, just like Master Xu Wan. Alright. Well, I, I, yeah, nod and leave. Your presence is unfathomable. I look forward to meeting you again. Yeah, and now you. <clears throat> Dutch Dutchin? Um do you need some assistance? We bill by the hour, but the prices are negotiable. We can support a large number of city guards. Right? And uh, what do casual laborers do? We specialize in packing and sealing loose goods, and the handling of luggage and large cargo. Efficiency guaranteed. Some foreign visitors don't know how to properly pack their tea leaves and jayware into their luggage, resulting in damage during transportation. Or they are unfamiliar with the roads of Yilan Wharf and choose the wrong path resulting in them finding stairs in their way and exhausting themselves. I see. By hiring 
hiring help like us in advance, you'll avoid lots of trouble. Sounds really tough. It's alright. Compared to the guys working as long long distance escorts, we're just moving goods within the city. The work is much less intense and safer too. Of course, some of us aren't official guard material yet, so they're trying to work their way up. The journey from Liwe Harbor to Elon Wharf is a great ordeal for guards, and you'll never make it without some skills. Yeah, I'm bound to finish with you, it seems. Why do you play by, why do you play by the hour? Oh, uh, because it's a part-time job. Um, our primary job is to assist the guys in the secure transport agencies with the unpacking and distribution of long-distance shipments. However, there aren't that many such long-distance shipments. Since we have nothing else to do between them, why not do some odd jobs and help some foreign visitors? Everyone knows when the not less long distance shipment will be arriving, so our work schedule is quite flexible if we only accept a few hours of work at any one time. I see. But, um, not over. We'll call if we need your help. Take care then, who knows. Maybe you'll make a fortune soon, and when the time comes for you to purchase lots of stuff, we'll be there to help. Well, thanks, Lucian. Appreciate it, my dude. Appreciate it. Uh... So, um... Lucian? Right? Are you acquainted by, uh... I mean, acquainted with, uh... A certain someone that I'm going to put just for your eyes. Feast! Feast on your eyes. Do you think about that? What do you think about that, rather? Chivalry will never die. Everyone is welcome to work with the Fae in Commerce Guild. We are currently expanding with new business venture across a, var a variety of industries. Uh, about commercial cooperation. Oh, uh, are you a merchant too? The Feyun Commerce Guild is currently exploring new, bu new business opportunities, including combining fabrics and jade, adding tea during the fabric dyeing process to introduce new fragrances and more. If you are interested in a business partnership, just talk to me, and I'll faithfully inform the Commerce Guild about the specifics of your intentions. Right. Um. Will the heir to your family come? About that. I am not entirely sure. I have been working here at Fiend Comps Guild for some time now. Yet, I still haven't laid eyes on Masters in Show. Well then. Rejoice. The Guhwachid, the Yon Master, is right in front of you. I, I do not say any, anything more than that. Well, at least I cannot do anything more than that. Zin Show is right in front of you. I, I heard that the old rounds of the Guhort Run are somewhere in Chinuville. Yep, they are. Perhaps someday, Master Zin Show will come and visit, should the mood strike him. I've heard that Master Zin Show is experienced beyond his years, and his knowledge is last. Perhaps after coming to Chinuville, He'll have a stroke of genius so free, and give us some great new ideas. He's right here. Maybe next time, even though the Gufuar Jade is he's here, yeah. But anyways. <clears throat> hey, um, Feng Tai, good store owner. Um, welcome to Fentai General Goods. Everyday items, commemorative jade jewelry, you name it, we start it. Nice chat phrase. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking at the merchandise real quick. Oh, sure, of course. Pitch your pitch.
tofu, rice, stewed chili, silk flour, violet grass, not delicious jade, cool lapis, clear water jade, genu adapti, and crab roe. Interesting. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, jadeware? That is right. We do have a bill to order jadeware service. But it requires a reservation, and the time required is based on how complicated the design is. You don't choose a piece of jade, it chooses you. Wow. Chance encounters often make the best purchases. So it's not a bad thing if you don't find anything you like today. Why aren't there many jade artisans? Many guests have asked the same question, and as did I when, was I, when I was young, yeah. Um, Day In, my master. Don't know if I've heard, I've heard about him. Day In, my master, told me that one must suffer no distraction when carving a piece, a piece of beautiful jade. If an artisan would also sell and promote, then their minds and are invaded by such thoughts, and true excellence will elude their work. In Genuville, the sale and production of jade are completely separate. This allows our artisans to focus on carving. Who knows, there might be an artisan sequestered within any given house you might pass by, meticulously shaping the shade in their hands. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Please come again. Don't know if I will. Uh, <coughs> So, I think I've, I've talked to every NPC at least, to every NPC at least in this area. This I think. Could be wrong, but I could also be right. So, I guess that I should, I should go to the next waypoint. The waypoint added nice soon. Oh, okay, that's right up there. Um, oh, wait, I have to go with here. A bit of walking and a bit of a... are the foundation of military training. Fights against powerful foes are necessary. Uh, opponents? That's right, there are many types of foe. Uh, charge forward during missions and take the lead in fighting bandits. See, treat them as your opponents and use all your abilities against them. During drills, I fight against Sergeant Lin with real weapons as if I'm fighting a real opponent. Practicing to fight against enemy leaders. Of course, the sergeant has at least 10 more years of training than me, so I usually get knocked down, but he's always careful not to hurt me. You can also have friendly spars with the hearted guards during break time to hone your hand to hand combat skills. Those will definitely come in handy when you're fighting at close range and can't use your spear. In short, fighting against different opponents will teach you how to fight in different environments. Is your normal training not enough? No, no, no. Our routine training covers 
dozens of different items, such as basic marksmanship, defensive formation basics, moving in offensive formation, and more. There's nothing to complain about in terms of variety. Unfortunately, the target audience of the training is the majority, that is to say, ordinary soldiers. You'll need to find other ways if you want to become stronger after learning and mastering everything taught by this training. My goal in life is to defeat monsters like Schwann and beasts alone, but I have yet to receive Red Slapis' approval and don't have a vision. Therefore, I can only keep honing my martial arts and challenging my physical limits. So, the strength of the Joanwin beasts is difficult to quantify. It's like how some people are completely hopeless at martial arts and some are talented geniuses. They are large, weak men and slender youths who have extraordinary soul skills. I'm sure some Joanwin beasts might be extremely weak to the point that even poorly equipped high guards can manage them. We currently have very little information about the strongest Shuangri beasts. I'm just estimating here, albeit assuming that they are on the stronger side, but a single pass like may be equal to a direct hit from the Guizhong Ballista. Guizhong. <sighs> Can a mortal really block such a mighty blow? No. I can't let this discourage me. I need to train harder. I'm waiting for you. Great point. Talk to you next time. Hmm? Thanks for the recognition. If you have a chance, why don't we have a friendly spot this time? Yes. Although, I'll uh, be sure to wipe the floor with you. But I was hoping for a catch. Didn't think I'd get an unusual outside instead of a fish. <laughs> Why are you fishing here? Sorry, what? Speak up, I can't hear you. Um, never mind. I read your lips, and if I'm not wrong, you're wondering why I'm fishing by the waterfall? Just as everyone else was asked. See the shallow area over there? Uh, some unfortunate fish come plummeting off the waterfall. In the moment they crash into the rocks. I feel bad for them, but I can't let them perish in vain either. So I cut them into delicious dishes and eat them with gratitude. As them, I don't have to worry about food, nor do I have to catch other fish. Um, if you look at the big picture, the number of fish that died in Vale each day declines thanks to, that to me. And that's a good deed, wouldn't you say? I only catch the fish that are destined to be bait, to be baited, and I think of it as uh, making friends. What a unique point of view. What is too loud? I can't hear you at all. Let me guess, you think I'm strange, right? Now, I used to be a fisherman who didn't care about anything other than catching fish and making money. But several years ago, I heard about the legend about chop fish from Mr. Dane at the, the tea house. Oh, so that's the okay. The chop and the chop adapters have been nothing but trying to have one in Chinu Vale. But I might have heard some of the chop when I, when I was fishing. I didn't want to make that mistake again. But I don't have any other skills. I've got to do this to make ends meet. So if you see a special chop when you're fishing, please let them go. It will be in your good fortune. I see. <clears throat> You're speaking too loudly. What? Louder, please. We who live near the lower Yellow Wharf are bombarded by the sound of the waterfall every day, so our hearing tends to not be that sharp. Stay safe while checking out the waterfall, you hear? <laughs> the huge difference in height in the violent waters can crush even the most sturdy sh battleships let alone an ordinary human. Well, not that you feel already in ordinary in the slightest, but best not to take the risk anyway. I'll leave you alone. 
Hmm. Will I make any fish friends today? No, because I'm going to catch them all. If you want me to catch them, I'll catch them for you. I think there will be any fish for you, it seems. Street food vendor. Uh, Leon Fawn? Oh. Um, <clears throat> tea eggs, tea cakes, refreshing snacks. Welcome to Leon Fawn Dim Sum. Simple and convenient specialty foods that you can even enjoy on board the ship. Uh, let me, let me, uh, let me take a look at the menu, please. If there's anything you like, Jade Vein TX. Let's purchase this. Right. Uh, Shinyu Brew. Which is this one too. And Tea Smoked. Tea Smoked Swab. Emphasize simple and convenient. Oh, it's a long story. Shinyu Vale has a leisurely and, le and elegant atmosphere. We locals are used to sitting by the water. Brewing and a pot of tea with two sauces of beans and two main dishes between us. Beans, you say? Do not let Urotachi Ito see this. <clears throat> uh, we drink, chat, and enjoy the view, and at the height of our enjoyment, we recite and compose poems. Ah, such freedom. They say a gorgeous view complements delicious food, and such an environment? The tea is one's cup, and the food. The tea in one's cup and the food on one's plate becomes exceptionally intoxicating. Many traditional dishes in Chinuville were prepared that, with that in mind. But at the end of the day, Yilong Wharf it is a commercial port, and foreign visitors wouldn't understand even if we told them. The people coming and going through here are only focused on getting their work done quickly and making a killing, so they need working meals that can be finished quickly. I made appropriate improvements to our traditional dishes to satisfy their needs. Once they fall for our local cuisine, I'll guide them toward calming down and enjoying a proper meal in an appropriate environment. In this way, we can adapt to the trend of commercialization while promoting our traditional cuisine. I see. You won't get seasick? Eating on board? That's exactly it! Chef uh, Bart John imp has improved our cuisine by adding a variety of supplemental ingredients while maintaining the dish's original taste. These supplemental ingredients greatly alleviate the symptoms of seasickness experienced by diners, so they naturally feel better. Uh, some repeat, repeat customers even pay as a special visit before boarding to purchase some refreshments. They say that even the worst winds and waves are nothing to fear while they have our uh, victuals in hand. It's great, right? It's truly. It's definitely great. Uh, come again, it's time. I look forward to serving you again. Said Chef Bot John. Really good food doesn't need to be ranked. There's no need to feel inferior, but no place for arrogance, arrogance either. True gourmet cuisine. It seems you are a fellow seeker and lover of the finest cuisine and daintiest of delicacies as well. I am Sean Bajan. I won't claim to be the best chef in Le Yelon Wharf. But I have never disrespected the original flavors of my ingredients. They always cook every dish with great care. Unfortunately, I do not often cook anymore. But these days are more tend to a very picky wandering gourmet. Someone who is just busy in the kitchen all day has quite limited influence in the end. Thus, over the past few years, 
I've taken in a dozen or so students and taught them everything I know. And now some of them have graduated. The owner, the owner of Leon Farm, Dim Sum, and the head chef of Gilroy Tea House were both my prized pupils. Wow, Sean Baja, Baja, you should try out their creations. May you find the offerings to your taste. Wait, wait, wait. Did you run into some kind of trouble? Uh, thank you for the charming words, my friend. I'm not in trouble or anything. This is just something that's been on my mind. Elon War faces Limitless Harbor, and so we receive a lot of merchants from Fontaine. In time, this place has become a melting pot of cultures and cuisine. True so. Some chefs have had never had Fontaine food, and praised it to the high heavens upon first tasting its novelty. Some chefs drew arrogance on the other hand when they saw that Fontanian diners loved Leeway's food, so they started claiming that Leeway is the best food anywhere. What do you think? From my perspective, from my perspective, neither is the right approach. You can't substitute Fontanian cuisine for that which comes from other nations, and what I said would still stand. No two people have the same preferences. So there is no single dish that will earn the praise of every single person. It's the same as in literature. What's the point of fighting for the empty title of the best? As a chef, one should be humble when looking at new dishes, and instructing them to learn the ingredients and the skills required to cook them. We should not blindly praise something that wasn't based on local ingredients or be intentionally conservative stalling progress thereby. Of course, these are just empty words, all I can do is point this out to my students, so they will always remember that they are chefs who strive to make better dishes. They should, they should also communicate with their colleagues, learning new ideas and doing away with bad ones. Alright, uh, is it done? Leave quietly. I have to explain this to people at some point. Tea smoked squad. Well, thank you, Chef uh, Bajan. Ores, <laughs> ores made from new bamboo feel better. Would you like to go to a Chowin village by raft? Uh, bamboo ores. Ores are made from new or old bamboo based on each fireman's preference. Strictly speaking, all the new bamboo from Chinsu village have the same strength so long as they are cut at the right time and processed right away. But every fairman's hands are different, so they make different choices. The fairman who taught me to sing said that it's just like tea, where the same leaves have different flavors after being processed by different tea majors. Some of us are accustomed to using ores made out of new bamboo, and some are accustomed to using ores made out of old bamboo, which have a unique building rhythm and hum melodies in unique ways. Folk song? Uh, every boatman in Shinyville will hum songs while sailing. And these songs are passed down to the young, to the young, from the old. Nobody knows who composed these songs many years ago, but they have been subtly engraved into the memories of most locals. The line that touched me the most is. Sun and earth from each other divide, the eternal whirlpool that never churns, beautiful jade concealed within. Alright. Now, not now, maybe it's time. No worries, there will always be a boatman waiting for you by the river here in Chenyuville. Yeah, seems like it.
hydrologist Yolu, Yolu, Wolu, okay, Wolu. Uh, the qualities of the soil and water, its specific composition, all of this is worth careful study. And you are? Hello there, I'm Wolu, a hydrologist working for the Ministry of Civil Affairs, and currently conducting a routine survey of Chinuville's hydrological and pathological conditions. Um, looking at you, you wouldn't happen to be an adventurer, would you? Excellent, perfect. Perhaps we'll get a chance to work together. Yeah, soon. You seem to be studying something very profound. It may sound profound, but if we're talking about basic principles, it's more like uh, analyzing the various ingredients in the seasoning of a dish. The most difficult part of this job is obtaining samples and determining effective components, both of which require highly specialized equipment to complete. Sometimes I even use consumable devices from Fontaine, in addition to my equipment from Liwe. If you carefully calculate the costs, this work is a pretty expensive undertaking. Without an appropriate organization collect allocating funds, most people couldn't handle all the required outlays. Even researchers sent by the academia probably can't cover all the expenses. So just trying to transplant tea trees from Geneva to Samaru is a fool's errand. As far as the Ministry of Civil Affairs is concerned, if we can completely understand the composition of the soil and determine the essential components critical for commercial crops, then it will be easy to pump up production of our biggest cash crops. Yeah, when I think about it that way, my work is pretty awesome. Um, okay. Well, uh, see you? Huh? Was someone speaking to me just now? Yes, I did. Some respect on my name. Here, over here. Uh, okay. Oh, well, slow down. Um, yeah. Watch your step. There's moss on the cliff. It's slippery. But the one who needs to be careful, I want to fly. Yes, you can, I'm on. The rocks here seem a little loose. Solidify. Be careful. Now, this is what we call adventure experience. Wait. 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 Yeah, you're amazing, Mr. Lemur. It's all the domain. Yeah. But, um, before I even try to do something like that. Hello. But yeah, that will be all for me today, guys. Uh, this has been, uh, well, a minor, let's say, exploration part of uh, the Yellow Wharf. Also, I had to, to do some things related to that beginning of the part where I had to work on uh, some things that I wasn't able to I mean that I didn't do uh, the first time I came here but yeah um, I continued somewhat the, the quest related to Charon Village and the fact that the water and soil uh, of Chinuville is degrading due to something I don't know yet what it is but uh, yeah, I have some other waypoints to unlock, obviously. This one, obviously, yeah. So I'll do that off stream. Uh, you'll see it in the next uh, video from me in the future. Or stream, rather. I don't know. Either or. 
Um, we didn't have the time today to explore uh, the quest related to the Buhua clan, but I'll do it uh, in the next, maybe the next video or the video after, depends on my progression uh, regarding the upper part of Chinyabel. And uh, yeah, then we will do everything regarding that in due time. And after that, also we will continue with this part here, which seems which seems even bigger than this one, to be honest. Which is my impression. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But yeah, uh, that will be all for me, guys. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. If you um, enjoyed the video. On YouTube, please make sure to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a video, and activate the notification bell, so, the notification bell, so that, yeah, never miss a video from me in the future. Also, if you want to get the uh, the uncut and unfiltered streams related to Genshin Impact uh, from me in the future, then you know what to do. Uh, come over to Twitch and follow me at twitch.tv forward slash forever where I do all my streams regarding this game and uh, if you want to support me on further then you know what to do go over to my patreon page and become one of the family which means the forever exclusives but yeah uh, that'll be all for me dudes uh, thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next video bye bye